na ebiombe au au bitali ebya serikali amona baigereli bobo ene bwa mwanya bantu bakarowana ikiombe kimanyikere mna catholic church justice and peace nigobono bacha kirie umurobiri ubukwegerera abasubati umanyekere mna okwa dada okwa na university ya nairobi nigoba aboriri abasubati kwa egwa esiko aseba gikire bikorwa asaba subati bago itwa go ikagukwa Asabu iko ba wodi ya serikali kunyara kwa bage kwa ile ile tambo kero bali ya bale bose bali ba gwikirania obuiti bonga buno bo roboti ruko bwati na asenjira yo gwikirano Uh, my name is Faith Ken and I'm a sexual reproductive health rights advocate and a gender activist. Today we are gathered here to talk a very crucial topic that is the femicide. Femicide is the intentional or honor killing of women because of their gender. So this is a topic and it's a crisis and it's something that has been happening in this country and we've seen it happen. So today this is a very topic that I think it's time that we should discuss it and take it serious because women are being killed and the perpetrators are walking out here. The victims Teams are known, but the perpetrators' faces are hidden. We are here to engage in a constructive dialogue. And dialogue is the one which enables us to know the merits and the demerits of the issues that are happening in our society. Today, we are living in an era of globalization. Nobody can negate that. And the technology, technology is playing a very vital and significant role. So don't meet somebody on the social media and you want to engage in one, two, three, four, five. That is one precaution. The Constitution of Kenya does provide that it is an inalienable right. And uh, according to the natural justice, it is one of the very tenets of humanity that must be protected by both the law and also by nature. And so you realize that as a country, we underscore the fact that human life is very important. And that's why the Constitution talks about human dignity, uh, both from Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya, proceeding up to its own article at Article 28, providing for human dignity, the need to, to preserve human life. What remains to be done is, is action, because it's one thing to have... Uh, a very beautiful constitution with the Bill of Rights, but it's a completely another thing to ensure that uh, those provisions are implemented to the letter and those, that those who are found to have uh, terminated or even violated without killing other persons are, are taken to account, are taken to book and held to account. Hardly does uh, the sun goes down before hearing that some young woman, that some lady has been murdered, has been killed, uh, in such a brutal and a gruesome, gruesome manner. And so I think that um, this is the best time that we cannot afford to sit by the fence as civil society organizations, as the media, as members of the society. We cannot afford to sit by the fence and continue to lament and complain that what is the government doing about it. But again, it's a time that we are coming together as stakeholders to ask ourselves that what are we doing about it? And that is why we are here. Until we are able to diagnose the problem, until we are able to know that where did the rain start beating us. And that is why we are taking this campaign, we are taking this conversation in a national dialogue that will help us as a community, as a society, as a country that we are able to sit down with our young people, with our young men, with our young women from the universities, from the institutions of um, higher learning and even in the institutions of um, other um, of lower learning so that we are able to have this conversation. And that is why we are having this theme, I am my sister's keeper, not killer.